A common frustration we hear with meta ads campaigns is that the conversion total in the interface is quite a bit higher than what our clients are seeing in the CRM. This has been something that's happening for a long time now, but I think we might have just gotten a little bit of help on trying to clear this up. So Meta recently released incremental attribution, which is designed to only count conversions if it thinks that the ad actually had an impact on generating that conversion, not any instance where somebody clicked or viewed the ad and then later went to convert. So in this video, we want to talk about what incremental attribution is, show you how to set it up and show you how to see the data for yourself in your account. I just wanted to review Facebook's official language around incremental attribution because I think it's important. Here, Facebook says that the incremental attribution setting optimizes ad delivery for incremental conversions using machine learning models that predict whether a conversion is caused by an ad. So again, it's really focused on trying to only count a conversion if it believes that conversion was impacted by the ad, not just if the ad was ever shown, which is what most conversion tracking in Facebook does right now. We all run ads because we actually wanna see results. So having campaigns that are actually driving incremental performance or driving more performance that wouldn't have been there without those campaigns is really what we're looking for. So now that we've had that official check-in, Let's talk about how you can use incremental conversions in your meta ads campaigns. I'm in one of our client accounts, so we have to have some things blurred out, but we're going to skip past most of it anyway. Let's just go to create and starting early with the campaign objective to use incremental attribution. You have to use either the engagement leads or sales campaign objective. You cannot use incremental attribution for app promotion, traffic or awareness. So let's go ahead and just select leads just because we can. Click continue. Always gonna set up a manual campaign. Don't need it to be tailored. We'll click continue. And now on the campaigns page, you don't need to do anything, but when we get into the ad set settings, whether you're using a lead campaign, like I am right now, engagement, or your sales option, for incremental attribution, you can only use website as your conversion location. You can't use website in instant form, can't use website in calls, can't use instant forms in Messenger, has to be just your website. We can then scroll down and you'll see here we've got the performance goal, conversion event, but if we scroll past this just a little bit, come into the show more options section here. Now we have the option to change the attribution setting for this ad set. It's gonna start on standard, which optimizes the delivery in a selected time window for a certain interaction type. And you can either use the default or edit this below. What they mean is right here for your seven day click, one day view by default, but if you want, you can edit this and say that you want your click through to be anywhere from one to seven days. You can use engaged view if you're using a video ad in your ad set. And then you can also change your view through to either be one day or none. So by default, Facebook is using the longest attribution model it can because it has seven days worth of click through, one day worth of view through. But for the incremental attribution, you click this dial here and now all of those other options went away because it's only focusing on if it had incremental impact on the performance of your ad set and campaign. Now I did miss one thing as I was setting this up. So let's scroll back up just a little bit. And for your performance goal to be able to use incremental attribution, you have to opt into either maximize number of conversions or maximize value of conversions. For this specific account, we don't have values associated with the conversion actions. That's why it's grayed out. But if you do have values associated, this will be an option but you cannot use any of the other goals, whether it's landing page views, link clicks, daily unique reach, or impressions for incremental attribution. It has to be maximize number of conversions or maximize value of conversions. After that, you would go about setting up the rest of your campaign, ad set, ads exactly the same as you would for any other campaign, and then you would be able to hit launch when you're finished. Once you've had some performance from your campaign with incremental attribution come through, you're gonna notice an impact in the performance that you see from your campaigns. So if we come over here, I'm just gonna scroll over to our results columns. This one, we have a custom conversion action as this combined conversions as our key goal. So we'll just be looking at that here. But with incremental attribution, the number that is reported in this field is going to be reflective of that incremental attribution number. Right now, these are legacy campaigns they're set up using the default attribution window. So seven day click, one day view. And that's where we get the 28 conversions for this campaign and seven conversions for this one. But by default, 
your campaigns will only report on incremental conversions in these columns or any results column that you have if you've opted into that. But you don't have to opt into incremental conversions to be able to see the number of incremental conversions. If you want to retain the existing legacy attribution model, but just get insight into what your incremental performance is, you just need to come up to the column selector, come down here at the bottom to compare attribution settings. You can then see down at the bottom, there's a checkbox for incremental attribution. I'm just gonna open that up. And you can see this conversion count for all conversions, just a first conversion. So only the first conversion that happened after a view of a click. This is effectively like counting only one conversion per user. And this all conversions would be counting every conversion using Google's language, or you can see both. For right now, I'm just gonna leave it at all conversions because this account only counts the first one anyway. So we'll click apply. And now in these columns here, we still have combined conversions. We've got seven, we've got 28. But if you look at the incremental numbers, this campaign says it only generated one incremental conversion, not seven. And this campaign only generated nine incremental conversions, not 28. In these next two columns to the right, that drastically changes the cost per conversion we're seeing. Rather than 116 for the account, now we're looking at $406. And I pulled this up because I wanted to make sure that we were highlighting a very important point. Yes, incremental attribution might be more accurate based on the number of conversions you've generated. It might match closer to your CRM data, but it's absolutely going to lower the number of conversions that you see in the Meta Ads platform. Now for some accounts that have tons of volume flowing through and you have lots of conversions coming into the mix, that might be okay for you to optimize only for incremental attribution conversions. But for an account like this one, we're looking at 28 days worth of data. We're going from 35 conversions for the month, which is about a conversion per day, a little bit over, so that's feeling pretty good, down to 10 conversions. If you've watched any of our other videos about Facebook, specifically about the learning phase, which you can check out at the top of the screen right now, you'll know that the more conversions you have, the better chance you have of seeing better performance down the line in meta ads, because it has more data to learn on, more success metrics, and it can go find additional users like the ones that just converted. So all that to say, incremental attribution can be a great tool to understand exactly how your campaigns are performing and make sure where possible, you're optimizing toward that incremental performance, not just any conversion that's associated. But before you dive headfirst into using only incremental attribution, think about how it's gonna impact the performance stats that you see in your account and make sure that you actually have enough performance coming through to support Facebook's pretty smart automated bidding strategies so that it can continue to see good performance for your campaigns. The account you're looking at right now, although I would love to switch things over to incremental attributions, I'm not gonna do it. I'm leaving everything on the regular attribution setting until we either get more budget so I can flow more through here or until we start to see that incremental number come up and I feel more confident that Facebook could optimize on a higher number. The last little thing I wanna point out here is in the bottom right, it's this pop-up. You can see the incremental attribution column will not show any results for data prior to April 1st of 2025. Like I said, this is a pretty new tool. It won't even show you data prior to this. So maybe start to get a baseline benchmark of performance for the first few months. See how your campaigns are performing with regular attribution compared to incremental attribution, and then decide if you want to test out a new ad set on incremental attribution, or if you're going to be like me for this account, retain the legacy version until you start to see better results. Overall, I think this is a fantastic tool from Meta Ads. Anything that shows us more transparency, and if anything shows they're being a little bit more modest in their tracking, I think is a good thing. We want to make sure that all the campaigns we're running are profitable and that they're actually profitable, not just based on some really long attribution windows. So this is a great tool to help me understand what's performing best, what's not actually driving results, and try to focus budget accordingly. If you have any additional questions about this incremental attribution setting or anything else in the Meta Ads platform, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.